health issues are the uh, are core issues for the member states. But there is a possibility for the European Union to work with cross-border issues. There is now a um, health strategy for the European Union, and it's based, it's based on a couple of principles. The first one is um, common ideas about health, that everyone should, should have a possibility to, to um, see a doctor, to get the treatment that you need, quality, solidarity and equal rights when it, in the health area. The second principle is that a good health is worth more than gold. This is not only a truth for the individual person, for the family, relatives, but also for the society. The third principle is that health issues should be integrated into policy areas. Women are able to play uh, a strong and generally put positive role for climate protection based on their networking and interpersonal skills and their ability to think and plan for the long term. Uh, but, and this is where we come to another problem that we see here and that we are working on, and that is women are generally underrepresented in the decision-making positions in their respective communities. Women need to be at the table to make sure that their interests are looked after. We cannot take it for granted that men will, will uh, look after um, these issues and also look for, for our interests and our specific um, um, sp specific uh, details or specific knowledge. Health is something very individual, I, I, I think. If I mention health to you or you or you, you will all have different notions of what health would be. The economical health uh, matters or issues are there because it, how you have your life, how your life affects you, affects your, your soul, your brain, and of course your uh, balance. We all know that the economic issues are very important, of course, to our health, as well as the environment, because we all live in an environment and we're all worrying, and of course, worrying affects our health. Culture is something which is very positive, because obviously we're not just looking at what is wrong or what is lacking or what is, is not so good for us. Um, we are also looking at the positive things in life, because it's very important after all, to be able to, to feel happy, and this is, I think, the best quality of life we're all aiming at, isn't it? Och uh, vi har då tillsammans med um, Kerstin Brisma gjort undersökningar där vi konstaterar att uh, om man väger ihop subjektiva och objektiva parametrar. Could you use what you eat to improve your health as a, a treatment? And this has been an experiment, and what you just went through outside was part of this experiment because one of the, the uh, um, things that's been, been tried is blueberries, who has a very good reputation, a lot of minerals and unhealthy um, things in, in blueberries. So uh, what they traced was um, when you had different kinds of fat, and if you could, you could trace that in the body, and if you like the food, which different age group did or didn't, but those age groups where they liked the taste of the food, you could see that the body received or, or, or took on board all the healthy parts of the food that the persons ate. But those who disliked the food, nothing was kept in the body. It all went out the natural way. We, are, we all know that women, women are equal, but women are different as it comes to biology. And we have to take account of that when we do research and also when we implement guidelines. Uh, and women are still underrepresented in, uh, in the articles and, and in lots of studies. And uh, when I recently read all uh, 100 abstracts uh, to grade them for the European Society of Cardiology meeting in September, half of them didn't have any sex-divided statistics. And also there are um, a Euroheart survey and other uh, studies ongoing in Europe uh, showing that we, uh, in cardiology we have an under-treatment, but the under-treatment is 
worse in women. They don't get enough blood lipid uh, medication, they don't get enough beta blockers, uh, which you need uh, uh, if you have had a myocardial infarction. So we think that, that there is a lot of things to do. I think from the medical point of view, it's just much more necessary to include a higher percentage of women in large clinical trials. We have to learn about more about hypertension in women. And we have to address the issue of hypertension through the whole lifespan of women, from the very from the beginning to the very old age. And uh, what we even have to do is to look at treatment and to, to learn more about maybe new treatments in women, new drugs, new treatment, and about the effectiveness to have treated to have the blood pressure go. From the patient side, I think we have to encourage the women to, to, to look on their heart, to be aware that hypertension is a risk factor, and to take the drugs, because non-compliance is a very major problem when you're dealing with hypertension, and this is true also in both genders. Heart failure is a very disabling disease. It affects 10% of the elderly, and women to the same degree as men. Um, clinical problems are dyspnea, exercise intolerance, edema, and so on. The European Heart Failure Survey analyzed these different entities in women and men. They looked at all patients that were hospitalized for heart failure in European hospitals. The one is called the classical heart failure with impaired pump function, and this is mainly found in men, and the other one is called dilated cardiomyopathy, where the heart does not dilate it. And the second one is interestingly found mainly in women and in elderly. Um, this can easily be diagnosed by echocardiography, and the European Heart Failure Survey also looked how many women and men that were hospitalized for heart failure did receive an echo. And it was found that 70% of men, but only 50-something percent of women, received an echo that diagnosed their disease correctly. Uh, why hormone replacement therapy is prescribed? I am a very strong supporter of the therapy when women need this therapy. Because women who need the hormone are women that after menopause, either 30, 40, 5, uh, 50 or 60 years, have a very strong estrogen deficiency symptoms, symptom. In other words, feel a lot hypoestrogenemia. And so it's important to treat hot flashes, night sweat, it is terrible, men cannot understand this, tiredness, irritability, depression, it is very important. And also the sexual life, this is very important, also for the well-being, and also, and especially for menopause. Don't uh, forget that uh, osteoporosis is a terrible hard problem for women, and not only for old women. Many of the confusion that we have now about hormone replacement therapy is due to the fact that in the United States, where the big trial has been produced, that have killed hormone replacement therapy, they use very often preparations that are completely different for those used, for example, in Europe. In Italy, we more use, for example, the natural estrogen, the natural progesterone.